good, good. There we go. Yeah. How's everything on your side? Just got back from the city. Um, pretty good, actually. Lots of cover. How, how, would, how did the oh. uh, teaching thing go? Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Eating it up. Loved it. Yeah. Who, yeah. who, who's, who set it up? Oh, uh, well, so it's, um, lady, uh, Stephanie, she, she's the, well, she's, uh, works at uh, the school. She's a executive in one of the schools, uh, high school. It's actually from when I went to, I met her at, when I presented at UMKC, uh, mm -hmm. when Brian invited me actually. So it was interesting that, uh, this, this came out of that. Mm -hmm. Any, any follow on engagement or plan? So it's, it's three days and, but we were, t I mean, we're, uh, of course I brought up the idea of the swarm build in Kansas city cause it's high school. We we're talking about, uh, the two teachers that are in the group, they're talking about, yeah, let's how, how can we make it happen? Like 50 kids for like, maybe practically speaking, logistically, like, can we round up 50 kids one day a week for four weeks? And, uh, we build a house. Yeah. yeah. That kind of thing. So, so that was interesting. That's interesting to, um, yeah. I mean, I, I think I think we should uh, be thinking about how to make it happen in many cases like that. Yeah. I was just going to say. I mean, like, if there's a way to get around child work laws, like like the the oh. getting the high schoolers to do it, I think that's an amazing idea. Well, I mean, especially so this would be, especially if yeah. you can find because I'm like one of the things we'll talk about is the zoning map. If you can, if you can give me potential high school locations, I can actually find the zones that they're in and see what the zoning is and see if we can make it logistically easier. Oh. Um, around the U.S. Or are you talking about just Kansas City or? Well, Kansas City for the first one. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I think there's there's potential. It would be. That would be great. Like the way you could fly is you're talking about uh, affordable housing. So it's community service could fall under community service. And um, however we do that. Yeah. I mean, lot, lots of details to work out, but. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. It allows we, this. Hmm. I'm not sure you'd be able to pay them, but one of the details we could work out is like, if you're the, if for the first one, if you do that instead of recruiting a workforce, you can you'll have more financial flexibility and you there's maybe some way to give back or like you know pay for the transportation or something right to make it low cost for the school system yeah um so this is one of the there will be different ways to execute on the house and this could be one way one path to to follow see if see if it works i'm gonna, I'm gonna mm -hmm. add this to the glide path as a possibility yeah, that's, um, I haven't, I haven't thought much, much about, but no, I mean, the teachers were like, yeah, the, you know, so I start with my presentation on OSC and the whole context of this and the engagement is pretty high. It's like, I could see the, um, yeah, it, people, people relate to this and then building the 3d printer as a real hands-on exercise. Here's some real tangible skills, but the, the high school thing is, I mean, they perceive it as, Hey, this is something meaningful. For students to do um, learning, learning by doing—that's something yeah. schools need. I mean, um, and if I mean, if the technique works, that we really can run crews that don't have the skill. We we teach, and that that's a whole. Uh, I I sent you the the thing the the task management of that like with a scrum board and quality control. Did you did you see that? Well, a long time ago. Yeah. It's not well, top of mind right now. Right. But the thing to figure out there um, in any of these methods, how do you really keep tight quality control over the entire project? And as I will have more time to develop this, it's like you could get pretty focused on, on techniques using modern technology that allow you to do this um, and project manage it effectively. So things like, I mean, so so you've got a scrum board, like the idea, your scrum board, because um, once again, the, the ta task challenges many, many different tasks, 
uh, you're building up a skill, you know, training people without the skill, right? So, well, a cheat sheet for at a very, very granular, granular level for everything. You come to the scrum board to check in, like literally the, the ticket would be corresponding to your cheat sheet. So when you come back for verification, you, you'd have to show proof. So either the person, <coughs> the quality controller actually looks at the work or you can take a picture and, and upload it. And it's mm -hmm. a, it's a image that's visible and quality controllable, uh, various techniques. Um, the only other cool thing around here is actually the other day we had the micro track, uh, running on an Xbox controller. Yeah, Yay. I saw that. I, I reposted for you. Uh, and not, not that one, actually, that was, that was just, um, that was just by itself. You just pre-programmed mm -hmm. it with mm -hmm. Arduino. And then the next day after that, Wes actually wrote an app and uh, to program an Xbox joystick. So you had a cell phone, you had the wireless microcontroller addition to the to the standard controller. And yeah, yeah. So that, that makes me think about other options like, um, I mean, the reality of like, say, say we're doing like for the campus here, it's like literally I can be sitting here, we've got internet. We've got five centimeter positioning accuracy through real-time kinematics in a, an open source software suite called ArduPilot. Uh, and they have uh, software for rovers, meaning vehicles, land vehicles, uh, stuff like that, that sounds so crazy, but it could be really good. Like for example, for the micro track, I mean, real issue on safety and, and you know managing that so you're not getting beat up right on the machine, you know, just mm -hmm. even, um, even if, uh, I'm to remote control it because uh, like the old day of the digging the foundation stuff. I mean, that's really, really hard on the body and all that. So mm -hmm. and I think there's there's a huge potential there. And um, so as we, you know, as we think and the relevance to the production facility, like imagine also like forklifts where or even a CB product like CB production, which is hugely labor intensive. So imagine then you're actually programming your tractors to do everything. So, so you've got first digging of a big pile with very precise coordinates, then a tractor that just goes up to that pile and by remote control just goes, goes to the brick press to deposit the soil and things like that. Stuff that's, it's almost like science fiction, but I mean, quite like when I, I just reviewed the, the state of the Arju pilot project and there's a bunch of bunch more autonomous, uh, land vehicles that came up since the last I looked, since I looked like maybe a year or two ago. So like the experience set is building there and the hardware to, to execute it is under a thousand bucks that we could add to our infrastructure for like, imagine the same tractor, but now you've got this very, very valuable addition for about a thousand dollars more in hardware, which is like, wow, it's pretty amazing. Cause that's, that's tens of thousands of dollars for any, like whatever John Deere or um whatever like uh bobcat has remote control additions and just their their little joystick it's like fifty thousand dollars or for us it's like just the joystick function that's like a hundred dollars you know in yeah, parts I, in afghanistan we we had a remote control uh bulldozer for mines and a bobcat oh yeah mm -hmm. remote control huh <laughs> yeah we uh we drove over an id and it had like these multiple hundred pound steel rollers on the front of it and the yep. ID blew yep. the rollers up and like one of them landed like right next. these things are like hundreds of pounds of solid steel it's pretty scary but anyways um <laughs> I'm I'm uh you want a quick update yeah yeah actually before I do that let me uh let me just try and capture some of this what you're talking about so potential yeah. swarm build partnership with high school slash students may solve labor problem um, and add some cool impact to the, um, to the project. Um, yeah. We're talking about... Just to, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, the metal level being the social technology that we've developed for swarms. I mean, man, it's time to put it to real use because, you know, I've been bragging about this for forever. It's like, oh, yeah, swarm builds this and that. But man, if applied scalably, replicably in various situations, very powerful. There's huge potential there. Um, 
it falls out like this kind of possibility with a high school falls out like pretty directly out of what we're trying to develop. Like if we're going to be able to run a crew of 24 with very detailed instructionals, I mean, there's no reason why this doesn't apply uh, in all kinds of contexts. And that's, that's why I was encur so encouraged after 2016, like I was pumped, man. And then of course, you know, the house takes a long time to finish. Then we went to, through different iterations. Um, uh, Katrina, you know, that was really hard for her kind of like burning out after that. And, <clears throat> but that potential is, it's huge. And I think we're very close to really, uh, really capturing it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yep. So let me just walk through, I, get, I, I don't know. You, is it make sense for me to walk through what I've been working on? Yeah. 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 Cool. Okay. So last week we left the meeting and the, the new priorities were for me, um, build the timeline for construction and account mm -hmm. for like the administrative requirements and government compliance. Um, and then the emergent ventures application. Um, so those are the two things that I focused on, uh, for the construction timeline, I created a new page. Um, and you'll see it on my log, mm -hmm. Kansas city, Kansas city building codes, maybe. So as you're looking, mm -hmm. there is a excellent website, um, with all the useful links, uh, with the city mm -hmm. of urban planning and development or something like that. And so you can you can read through on a digital library that's um, easy to navigate all of the building codes, all of the zoning requirements, basically like anything legal related to building in the city. Mm -hmm. um, and so <clears throat> I'm still in information gathering phase, but I think I think the next steps are um, you need to register on that compass link, the video that I have, because that's how you're going to submit requests or applications for permit that's how you submit all the engineering documents um it's not time sensitive right now but like i think that is like how we move forward tactically and um i haven't gotten any luck hearing back from uh my contacts in missouri like for a building mentor and so my recommendation would be either you or i can do this but we need to talk to a human being and just lay out sort of what we're trying to accomplish and just mm -hmm. take the temperature. Like we, like we don't need a decision on anything. We just need to talk to human be a human being inside the system that can give us sort of like be an ally as we're starting to navigate stuff. Um, and yeah. When you say in the system, you're saying within Kansas City, or this is anywhere, person anywhere, it, right? No, well, with, assu assuming the spec bill is going to be in Kansas City, so and so. <clears throat> There's a there's a program called Advanced KC, and Advanced KC is like this initiative on the government that includes economic development programs for opportunity zones, and so I've got the point of contact um, under key points, uh, who's Carrie Tyndall, and I didn't reach out to her yet, but I just wanted to put that on your radar. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. so so I think that's the big takeaway there. There's a tremendous amount of information. I haven't gone through it all yet, um, but kind of what I've gleaned is one of the links up here is interactive maps. So they've got some GIS software that lets you see, view the entire city by zone and a lot of different useful filters with respect to like, like um, who owns what property and <clears throat> where the floodplains are and all this other stuff. Um, it's mm -hmm. much more information than I could use at the time, but I think, I think that'll become useful as we're looking at site selection. Mm -hmm. um, so that may help us narrow down location, but like at first glance, there's enough residential zoning where I think, and what you're, what you're doing is a detached single family, which is uh, the most, one of the more permissive structures with respect to the codes. Yep. Um, and like, just d d how far did you delve into the inspections themselves? Like I'm looking at it. Yeah. I'm so, not seeing like <clears throat> yeah, time timelines like the, yep. Trying I, think to put we're it on long, a time map. 
I think we're a mm -hmm. long way from the timeline, um, specifically because um, we have a lot of unanswered questions about if we're building on site, um, whether or not, like what the electrician inspector needs to see, what the, or you, I don't even know if you need separate trade inspections um, or if you just need like one building inspector. So I'm still, I'm still at that level of detail. Um, what I have noticed though is anybody who's going to build a new structure in a residential zone either has to be a general contractor or have a general contractor's license. There has to be some general contractor who's in charge overseeing the project who answers to a building official who represents the city or mm -hmm. uh, you have to be the primary resident and you have to buy all the material and do all the labor yourself. Mm -hmm. And I'm like 90% sure I'm interpreting the law correctly there. Um, and so you had mentioned you're going out for your GC license. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to apply to KC, but like that may be. Yeah, I got to do it. Just, yeah. Even if you don't do it, like we need some general contractor to own the project from like a management standpoint. Yep. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's, that's kind of the summary of the building code timeline permit situation. I think we have a lot, a lot of more unanswered questions, uh, but like I said, still information gathering at this point. Yeah, and also, uh, you know, like, um, and uh, generalizing this, if we always go like, you know, whenever we study something and we go to explain, we go one level up, it's like there's only certain things that are inspected <clears throat> in general. So the, the start would be, Here's in general, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven right. X things that need to get inspected. And uh, like, can we get any answers such as, okay, like we, it might be four inspections. It might be eight inspections, whatever it is. Question is how much time from the time you say, Hey, I'm ready for an inspection. How, how long does it take? I mean, that's, can we do something like that initially or? Yeah, that, no, so. I have 100%. Yeah. Um, I'm just like, <laughs> it was a lot of stuff to go through. And so I, I didn't get to that level just yet. Yeah. But I think I think that'll be my next thing. And I just need to document so I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And did you get a sense, like, how many are required? The number um, of? I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's uh, mechanical foundation and structure or mechanical electrical plumbing foundation and structure but what i have <clears throat> what i can't tell is whether or not all of those are rolled up into a building inspection that is separate or encompassing um it, so the answer is no i don't know but mm -hmm. I, I think i know where to look yeah it's probably like it's probably something that's less in a code than just talking to a someone at the department like um you think that that would be worthwhile just call up some just call up the zoning uh the inspection office directly saying hey um building new construction how many permits how many inspections do i need like that kind of thing or would that shortcut anything or would that i think the quickest way to answer is there's two 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 pathways you can take one register on the compass portal hmm. if you want mm -hmm. you give me the login info so that i can like go through it and, and see and okay. all the permitting and inspections is managed through that software so in theory and like the first step is to submit a uh building application request and then once that request is approved then you can submit the plans and engineering documents and so there's an administrative review that happens before you break ground and then once that happens i think then it'll illuminate what the inspection schedule is going to be but <clears throat> that's so like that's path one register on the compass for kansas city and then the second thing we need to do is talk to a hu like multiple human beings and have all of the conversations and ask all the questions because i would i would trust a conversation with somebody in the government more than i would trust my reading of the code because i'm going to miss something and the, it it's not written in a way that says like if you're a Single family detached home builder, this is what you need. And here's a comprehensive list. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. Um, one sec. Looking at the compass. Now, do you want me to reach out to uh, the advanced KC representative to start and see where that leads, or do you want to do it? Advanced KC is sorry. What is advanced KC? Advanced KC is the um, sorry. Let me let me find it. To, oh, it's not page. It's it's the initiative uh, that's part of the the city development department that includes like opportunity zone and um awesome. it's supposed to stimulate yeah. growth in kansas city and there's a point of contact listed who's like the the associate director or something of the entire department uh it would be useful let's see the um what's the at which point are we getting traction is like, okay, we've looked at a parcel, we're looking at land, we, we probably want to be, um, like what would the discussion be regarding like, what are the, like what are the specific, spe specific initiatives right now happening? Oh, I mean, um, the, the, the conversation would go like, <clears throat> hey, Carrie, my name's John, I represent um, Marchin and OSE, and here's what we want to do here's what we're thinking um like one is there an alignment with advanced kc that you can think of and two we're new to this it, what sort of resources can you provide uh, uh, or guidance in terms of how to start this process with a goal date of you know march 1st being where we break ground mm -hmm. like like literally just introducing ourselves and starting a relationship yeah. i mean it's just just the same thing i did with the department of labor yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, so it's assistant city manager. Yeah. Yeah. Um, would. Yeah, like, is there an opportunity? Like, what? The questions are that are relevant, or what? What programs? Maybe, maybe as we build the first building, is there something we can plug into that's got some certain advantages, or we're doing something in a particular way? I know there's a. The other thing you might, I don't know if you ever ran into this, but there's cottage, like a cottage housing provision in Kansas City. I don't know if you ever ran into it, but where you can build multiple smaller buildings on the same lot. And we yeah. found out about it when we were looking at that other lot. Like that was a special thing to encourage um, smaller, smaller housing for multiple people. Um, but like, okay, is there some program that we don't know of that we should consider that there's some in that meets uh, what we want to do, but yeah, yeah, it's um, um, could be so, could be a good discussion. Well, it, there's going to be multiple. I, all I'm asking is, do you want me to introduce ourselves, or do you want to do it? No, I think uh, I think go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same thing with the Department um, of Labor, right? It's it's if I if there's a question that I can't answer, I'll I'll bring you into the conversation. Um, but, okay. Yeah, I mean, you made it happen there, like, make it happen here. <laughs> yeah, totally. So, and th this is going to be yeah. multiple. Yeah, we may we may yeah. be in contact with them for a while. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah the definitely. second thing. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The second thing I worked on was the Emergent Ventures app. Um, and I created a page for that as well. Um, I don't know why it's taking so long to load. Um, I started with the logic map. Uh, here we go. <clears throat> I did some research into past winners. Um, so on that page, you, I, I cleaned up the table and uh, on a separate sheet did a pivot table so you could see the number of awardees by category. Uh, and that's on sheet two. Mm, still navigating there. Yeah. Since I was... Uh... It had to convert to a Google Sheet, so it doesn't look as pretty. Okay. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you can edit that okay. um, and filter as you need. <clears throat> um, there are a lot of... Oh, Teal Foundation. Okay. It is a very diverse field. 
that they 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 award they award research grants and writing grants. They award, um, you know, I think one of our challenges is gonna be like, under what umbrella? And we don't necessarily have to choose this. I think they do, but um, it's like, well, how do, how does OSC fit in? And that yeah. Yeah. answering that question is kind of why I started working on the logic model, um, so that I could tell the story of how what we're doing now leads up to achieving some grander vision. And I didn't finish it. Um, I think this is something that you and I should both think through, but I'd be curious to know your thoughts on what I've done so far. Going into the logic model, I see two pages. Of, um, This template like inputs, activities, outputs, is that yours or is that something they they suggest or? No, is a friend of mine shared this with me for something unrelated and I just thought it was mm -hmm. a good place to start. Yeah. I mean, different, different ways to go. It's like um, value, I mean, an understandable value proposition right so there's the big there's create open source economy below that create methods of collaborative economic development of real products below that develop the seed eco home as a viable open product to dent housing issues to contribute significantly to solving housing issues that's kind of that level right that's kind of where we're at and frame it within the the larger framework right that's my initial thought uh initial thoughts that come to mind um and we do that through developing the apprenticeship model like what's um the narrative there is it's like okay we're developing infrastructure for for t there's the there's the vet issue there's um developing hands-on education uh, for solving pressing world issues maybe that's that's kind of like the angle develop um a practical education for solving pressing world issues converting workforces to to important meaningful work and wrap it into the cd home so write a narrative uh, along those lines something along that. Let's see, um, summarizing some of the people who won already. Let's see, what do we got there? Um, what, any thoughts on that? Like what kind of, what's the nature of it? Like the scope? Um, we're in, <laughs> it's like, it's like very detailed things, right? Um, I mean, look, I'm just gonna read off some of the, the grant areas economics, charter cities, bioengineering, art, hitchhiking, defense procurement, economics, social, sports politics, uh, film, medicine, law, history, crypto, philosophy, mm -hmm. physics, chemistry. I mean, it's the, the application is, is for moonshot idea. And so, so a lot of it, there's like writing general travel, research yeah. travel um do they say amount of the no not the on funding? this table not on this table now but, but it mean, was it's... uh was it like the 50k initial that and then uh if you do well with that there's more was was that what i recall or uh, they're they're kind of vague. I, I I don't remember something. I can go to the website real quick and find out. I mean, I think I think they have a bucket of money, and the it's run by economists, and so I'm sure they just dole out funds based on potential and how you justify how you're going to use it. That's my best guess.
and, and we're they're they're saying advancing prosperity, opportunity, liberty, and well-being. I mean, like that's right here. Your wheel out. Is a lot of the program that it's like a like a it's a fellowship. Um, is it like where you join? Basically, it's like you become part of a community. And there's there's also that I hear something about logistics of there's some time you spend at George Mason or, or like how did that work? I think it's flexible. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, when they announce a new cohort, there's usually a, a in person meeting uh, or like seminar or something like that. And then I think they tailor the engagement based on the awardees. I mean, if you just think about it, <clears throat> Uh, there's there's two guys Alex Tabarak and Tyler Cowan who run it, and at each cohort is something like 15 or 16 awardees, and it happens every three months. So if you do have some sort of one-on-one -on -one mentorship with the like core team of people who run this, it's probably not very tiny. Is that something that they, that's one of their activities, or is is they doing like a full time effort on on running this program? It's just one of their activities. They uh, they're professors who run a popular blog and then also write and uh, do research and teach. Was a spreadsheet, is that something you, you scraped or th that's something they provided? It was a third party that I edited. I like copy and paste and then cleaned up the data a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. How do you, after finding out what you, what you now know about this. So you're saying, yeah, definitely. Like this is uh, looking into the details, but you know, how much time do we spend on it? And, uh, or is this something that you're looking at? You'd suggest more like, oh, as we develop the program here, uh, this like kind of falls out of it, or this is something, okay, spend like a week, you know, doing this or, or how much time I budget should we allow to this? in our so, in our yeah. glide path i i'm dedicating um half of my osc time to building the foundation for this application um i would like to submit something in time for the next cohort which is in january um mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just follow, following the historical pattern um <clears throat> what i think would be most valuable is um like mm -hmm. one or two weeks before the new year, you and I dedicate more time. Uh, so like, <clears throat> let's call it, you know, the end of December, I think we yeah. should have all of the information and tools ready to write the 1500 word proposal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. all of the key documents and, and supporting material that we have on the wiki um, elected so that we can, you know, Maybe maybe it starts with like a <clears throat> one of the uploads is a link sheet that shows the highlights from the wiki, the like most important stuff. Uh, maybe in in like <clears throat> organizes the links in such a way so that they can see like your TED talk, they they can see like third party press coverage, they can see all of the work that you've done historically um, through clickable links, and then the specific project documents that we develop between now and then for the swarm build and for the apprenticeship. Um, so there's Merc Mercatus Center, George Mason, you, there's that stuff about what's your moonshot. Beyond it, is there a specific website for the, the Emergent Ventures? Um, where is that? The wiki link I have is just the application. Uh, is there a website for the, the oh, more about Emergent Ventures? Let's see. Did I see that? Yeah. Ah, 
Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I right. should probably take a look at that. Um, so as far as Mercatus Center, is that <clears throat> that's one of their projects? They, they're on a number of projects or tell me a little <clears throat> more. So, so the, the people who run this grant are a part of the Mercatus Center, which is tied to George Mason. And so they're professors at George Mason who also do a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I should. Uh, what do you recommend I would do on this? So <clears throat> go through, go through the, the list of winners, go through the site and think about pitch contribute and, and, Yeah, my, my recommendation is model. Yep. Yeah, my my recommendation is is for you and I to collaborate on the logic model so that we can tell the the narrative arc. Um, I would say in two weeks' time, we need to have a strategy for how we're going, like what documents we're going to submit that are supporting, and how to organize them, and then <clears throat> like the week before or, or right after the new year, we should be cranking out the fifteen hundred word proposal, and I think, and so, so like near term, just work on the logic model with me. And then I would also ask Steve what he thinks, it's just based on what you've said about him. Uh, I would bring it up with him and just see if he's aware of it, if, you know, if he's ever done anything like this before. And <clears throat> ideally somebody who's worked with you longer than I have that can help uh, articulate the like the grand vision, because I've been very tactical with you for the past six months. And I think it might might help to get somebody who sees who's been with you for long enough to sort of see like how you've progressed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so for next time for next week, um, what would you like me to do on this on the emergent ventures? Let's play, let's just no bad ideas on the logic model. Let's see if we can fill it out. That's it. Um, on your logic model, you've got problem statement and then assumptions, etc. cetera. Um, inputs activities. So, so you're saying, okay, that's those, all the columns, inputs, activities, outputs, short-term outcomes, intermediate impact, problem statement and, and assumptions. So basically think think a little bit more about that. Right. Hey, like I the, think the we'll, grand thing is, grand thing yeah, is I, what are we trying to solve? Like that. that's kind of like the way to think about it. I think so, uh, yeah. What are we trying to solve? Well, why is this important? How is this relevant and imminent or like timing? Because timing uh, has got to be right. Um, yeah. Okay, I'll give it some thought. I didn't, I didn't think about um, pitch for this, um, but yeah, we can uh, spin a narrative around. Like, okay, here's the. Um, we know we have certain goals around the Cedica home, so perhaps flesh it out very clearly, and expand on the whys. Uh, the whys, like, why are we doing it so it's clear to others, like, why we see this, um, this good possibility to do it. Yeah. And perhaps this is a way, so, so the unsolved thing is, like, the solving for showing up, which just as a longer term narrative to date has been, oh, we're going to collaborate in open source and magically we'll develop products and it's not how it works, we're finding out. The current mental model is we're going to start a viable enterprise that proves the economic case and we're going to, uh, our new problem statement is how do we turn people away? <laughs> that's okay. that's effectively the shift since, since like that kind of uh, really became clear this year. That's um, for a long time I've been saying the revolution will not be funded uh, after this year, uh, the the answer is more like, 
we're going to fund the revolution. Uh, so before it was more like, oh, it's somehow that will come together. It's more like very, very, very simple. There's enterprise, there's revenue, and that's the case we're making, you know. Um, this is kind of sad, but it's it's a way to do it. Well, <laughs> it's, it, it ties into sad, what but... we've talked about before, which is, you know, I, I don't use this term lightly, but it's it's a little bit subversive because you're operating within capitalism using the, the tools and the rules of capitalism to empower people, people who are disempowered through capitalism. I mean, you're lowering the barrier to entry to a higher standard of life uh, by creating pathways to it that aren't just monetary and aren't just found in markets. You're like giving people the skills that they need, which I think is kind of cool. Think about what you just said, where um, it's um, in some way we're making the ultimate case for capitalism right. because it's a pure form potentially. Yeah, because capitalism is supposed to be about efficient. Now it works today, it's efficient in specific things, but altogether it causes major damage. So spinning, so, so getting like philosophical into that, but very practical, like through, okay, here is open source, like how that, that's a game changer. And we are dealing like, I still keep asking every, <laughs> every day. It's like, man, um, like with Katarina, I keep, keep having this discussion, like, is it really that nobody's going to show up and we're just going to have to buy the revolution? <laughs> um, I'm still trying to get deeper insights into it, but there's, um, we do know quite a bit about it to, to, sp to spin a, a coherent narrative, like what the blocks are. And by studying those blocks, like, okay, why are we proposing this solution? Like, uh, so yeah, really trying to explain it in, um, in the logic right. model, I mean, the application is very short, so we'd have to do it. I mean, 1500 words to explain right. the state of the world. But, <laughs> but we're, I think we're dancing around the right. edges of it right now. Um, and I think what the terminology we need to work out is like, because, you know, philosophically, I, 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 I am pro capitalism, right? Um, I just, I, I think what I'm trying to do through OSE or a, the way I'm thinking about it is like we're reducing the ways in which capitalism can be corrupted that exploits people, right? So, so like if 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 uh, empowerment and agency are shifted lower and lower, and power is is transferred from like the oligarchies and monopolies that can form potentially one of the trade-offs of capitalism, further down the chain to the individual. Um, you're still in capitalism, but you're doing it in a more ethical, sustainable way. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, it would be a case for very clear writing uh -huh. about the true meaning and impact of distributive, distributive enterprise. Right. And that's that's the article in, in MIT Innovations Journal from a long time ago. But I, and there's some. Have you read that by by the way? Like there's I some narrative to. there. Yeah, take a look at that because it's probably like the Innovations Journal V2.0 where we make the points more powerfully and more simply. Cuz I don't I think that article was like too long and kind of too confused. It did introduce some interesting topics namely distributive enterprise and I think Uh, kind of maybe, yeah, yeah, just um, a compelling story of why it's not happening, why it's important, and how we are uniquely positioned, or the world is uniquely positioned to actually accept it at this time in history. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, it's. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the my my lizard brain, like my my rock smasher brain, is basically saying like. You know, when I, taking bets, for example, like I see a lot of human potential that's being unused. One of the reasons it's being unused is because the barriers to entry are just mm -hmm. a little bit too high, right? Just a little bit. 
And so we, we give people a little bit more resources and attention and help them participate in the economy in a more productive way. That, I mean, in a nutshell, that's just kind of like how I'm looking at it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, let me pause. There's one more thing I did, um, but I don't want to break this conversation if you have more to say. No, it's uh, right now it's just philosophical until we actually think of a um, logic out of a good pitch. Yeah. And it, it's, it's MIT Innovation Journal. Yeah. Um, I'm looking over mm. for it right now. Distributive Enterprise. Oh, it'll be, yeah. If you look up Distributive Enterprise, that article is there. <clears throat> Got it. Okay. Um, the, okay, so the final thing I was going to say is I, I went on the investor call for the S2A modular home company. Oh, yeah. So I learned some interesting things. Um, they're seeing the same opportunity. They're seeing a strong business case for disrupt disruption in the construction industry. Their strategy is to form uh, 35 factories nationwide in the next three years. Their value prop is um, shorter time, lower price, better design. Um, so efficiency in, in the environmental sense and in the production sense, um, they're. What kind of product is this modular housing or it's not have, site built, it's modular that you deliver to the site and put up with a crane. It's 90, 10, 90% is at the factory. 10% is on site. Mm -hmm. they, and they, they have three models, the SH one, which is a, the seed eco home comparable. I think the square footage is smaller and it's only a rendering right now. And they, I asked what the price point is and they didn't, they were very vague. They're like, well, it depends on how many you're going to order. And, you know, we can talk offline, but no, they no, have a product. <laughs> exactly. They don't have a product yet. Um, their initial target was for the 55 and over three to $400,000 single family home. Now keep in mind, this is, this does not include land. Um, so they're only At selling like a thousand square foot range for this model. Uh, again, very vague, but they they're mm. selling it as a customizable floor plan, floor plan that is let's call it fifteen hundred, two thousand square feet, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, five factories have already broken ground. Um, twenty already have the funds allocated or raised to build the next twenty. And it's about six months to build the factory. The factory is like a 40 acre campus with uh, initially one long assembly line, completely net zero. Um, they say that they have the only, they have exclusive rights to graphene solar technology, um, which gives them a energy advantage in terms of production and storage. Um, Tesla, they alluded to some partnership with Tesla for wall batteries. Mm -hmm. um, and then next year, their goal is to do 920 million in investment, uh, institutional investment. And there's, there's set, so like, <laughs> I shouldn't have been on the call. The call was for investors interested in uh, $20 million stakes. Uh -huh. uh, <clears throat> so I don't know how I got, on that list, but um, the return, so oh. they're, they're basically pitching like a four or five X return on $20 million. So over how much time? <laughs> uh, five years. Yeah. What do we learn from that? Well, I can tell you that our facility size for the basic micro factory, it's 4,000 square feet, which is 400 times less what their, their micro factory is. Well, the, um, what, I, what I take away from the whole thing is that they're still operating in business scale constraints as they stand. They're, they're, not, they're not as revolutionary as, as our plan is, which is to upskill labor and build house simultaneously using existing supply chain. So Ooh, I think catch that, one. catch that one, write that one down. Do you remember what I said? I don't even remember what I said. Upskill labor 
while simultaneously well it's on the recording yeah yeah i'll uh, use that in our app okay yeah review the call <laughs> yeah so so you're upskilling labor while producing a product using existing supply chains and you're selling it yes, in discount. so supply chains. so i think i think that even if they achieve everything that they said they're going to achieve there's still a market for specific specifically affordable housing that they're not really addressing so like this sh1 model you know, they could become this like very powerful Tesla like company and uh, get big, massive contracts with San Francisco and, and all cities and states across the country to deliver these small, modular, tiny homes. Um, but that still wouldn't solve the problem, which I think is a little bit more fundamental about local labor markets. Um, and so, you know, I envision a world where both OSE and S2A exists and they're not exactly competing with each other. They don't use local, do they bring in their own people to do the actual build or they partner with the developers? Campus? Yeah, they partner mm -hmm. with developers in the in the delivery location to be the installers. And their value proposition to them is that that 10% cost it takes to install on site, that stays with the developer or with the builder. Mm -hmm. And they're they're in the three hundred to five hundred price point, okay. Which for translated for a home buyer could be five six hundred grand. Well, after you factor in the land and the you know administrative costs, all that. Yeah. But yeah. And so so like let's say they do that, and then you come along and say. Um, we can build something that's not as fancy, but performs as well for one fifth the cost. And we're mm -hmm. going to employ a bunch of people in the area and we're going to mm -hmm. upskill them so that we're not going to require them to have contract licenses or, or experience. We're going to train them while we're doing that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> at, to me, it's kind of apples and oranges. Um, but, you know, the biggest takeaway really is that People are putting their money where the mouth is in big ways, specifically to mm -hmm. disrupt construction, which I think is as much market validation as you would need on a national level. Who that who needs market validation? No, I'm for saying us, for, for you, yeah. That, that yeah. it's that just proof that of housing is ripe yeah. for the taking. Right. Yeah. Like other people are identifying this as a problem and investing in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I wonder how, if you look at the outcomes, because that's that's still something we're trying to clarify, like, who are we serving? Because right now, it's like, uh, our initial goal was to serve the poor, like, but it the practices, it's it's not, not exactly that. It's people who are going to get access to a lower cost home. That's not poor people, right? It, it's, it's all the pe people I went to high school with who are living on their mom's couch. And what you're offering them is a chance to live on their own and get earn like learn a skill that's valuable and, and can be marketed for like on their own. It's it's bringing well, them back the, into the economy. That's for the builder side. What about for the client side? <laughs> yeah. Well, same thing for the client. It's it's yeah. You're 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 a millennial who can't afford to buy a five hundred thousand or like can't keep up with, with house prices as they're increasing to maintain yeah. your standard of living. Yeah. You've completely changed the game. On that. It's yeah. It's like millennial person getting into this, but it's like, you know, the, the, one of the recognitions was that, well, that's not necessary. Like, okay, that's, this is not solving the, the really underinvested neighborhood. It could be, but it's like, there's a step to that. Um, step one is we learn how to build housing at low cost. Step two, the providing an ample supply of affordable housing um, will impact like the poverty thing, the the, the ghetto, so-called ghetto thing. Um, but it's not like that person uh, in the current economy 
they don't have the money to do this right now, right? It's the people who don't have a budget, like that, that problem that we can solve a little later once we get going and then we can cross subsidize and things like that. But initially we we're thinking, oh yeah, it's like, that's our primary audience. Well, how do you make a scalable business case with people that have no money? You know, that, that was the problem we ran into. It's like, <laughs> I mean, but there's a, look, there's a natural progression here because there's a labor yeah. side. So like you could potentially, yeah, yeah. it like at a hundred dollars an hour or starting at 50, working away to a hundred dollars an hour as a member of one of these crews, how long would it take before your income is stable enough where you can get a loan at one fifth the cost of a single family home? I mean that, so I, oh, I, yeah. I think this is changing. This is definitely changing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, so it's like, we're solving, um, like just, just to see how it works. It's like, we're solving the housing thing, but it's not that simple. It's like, you got to empower people first. This is kind of like part of the lessons we get out of this. Exactly. Yeah, just gen generic wholesale empowerment. Oh yeah. We are selling housing too. <clears throat> to clients who can afford them. Right. And, I did want to mention just one lingering question. I don't know if we have an answer now is <clears throat> I know where we are and I know where we want to go with the apprenticeship. What I haven't figured out is when we have to decide if we're going to do small investment to do workshops, to build tiny homes or try and get money to do massive investment to go right into the apprenticeship or someplace in between. The one thought is that that investment can be addressed by earned revenue if bringing the remote crews actually works. See that? So that means on the job training right there, one, two weeks, one to two weeks. And that's how we deploy the first one. I mean, I don't see the first one getting done outside of that model. Where are we going to get 24 people? Unless right, you part so of And that would probably, that would not be the first build we do. We'd have to have mm -hmm. built one or two before that. Yeah, We're not going to just go there with, the, yeah. with uh, adding that level of risk because that's another risk factor. And you have to, you have to right? work into the school's curriculum. Yeah. So, um, so the way I, I guess my mental model right now and, uh, metacognition, mental models, baby. Uh -huh. um, my mental model on it is, on, I mean, I'm not seeing a way to, to address as we build apprenticeship to get those people so that we're not drawing it out to this. I mean, we did it this year. We drew out the build of the CD go home to the point that it's not done today, uh -huh. right? We couldn't get labor. I mean, people in apprenticeship uh, took way longer than we thought in terms of schedules in general, right? right? So how do we not get into that problem next year? And there is no solution because that problem is very real. Uh, the difficulty of the work, um, yeah, and just labor in general, right? Yeah. So this is labor in general, plus construction is particularly hard, I'd say. Okay. Um, like for like in town here, I knocked on doors to actually get people and uh, had like six people uh, say potentially yes. One showed up, one or two, I think one, and never saw them after the first day. Right. So okay, yeah. So that that issue. So so investment. Like what I see, what I could see is okay. We got to put our eggs into the. The distributed swarm that's still the same path because we're developing all the documentation necessary for that right right um so if we succeed at that when we succeed in that um uh, don't cannot conceptualize another solution right now i can think about it like okay so what if uh we did some well i mean the, the other thing is yes you can go all out and get funding and do like absolute minimum infrastructure improvement here, actually get the program going here, right? When you think about that, it's like, okay, um, because of the costs involved in that, 
why don't we just take it right to the field, you know? Yeah, I and mean, avoid, the, you know, so maybe we'll, think we'll, about a little more. It, we're not going to come to a solution today, but just so you know where I'm, my understanding, forget the CV go home for just a second. Yeah. When we were thinking about the apprenticeship, we're like, okay, we need to build the infrastructure to support the apprenticeship. Mm -hmm. We do that with workshops, two-week courses, pay-to-play that simultaneously give you revenue while building the parts of the infrastructure. And the only reason we tabled that is because we thought getting the product to market faster was more important. And so just going back to my original question is there's a trade-off here of your time and resources and, and attention right now we're focusing on getting the product to market and the ultimate goal as far as i understand not or one of our next goals then is the apprenticeship but do you still even if you get the product to market you're still left with a gap between the product is now in market and being apprenticeship ready because there's still that infrastructure problem and if you're if you're working on fueling demand for the seed eco home you may have revenue coming in but we still have to think about, okay, how are we going to use that revenue effectively if your time yeah. and attention is selling CD goals? Well, I think that that gap problem you identified just now, and that's good thinking. That's, yes, good analysis here. There's that gap between, okay, so we built some an apprenticeship ready. If we have built some, I think the assumption there is we've shown either a very robust model already or the indication of a very robust model, we might still have to work out some kinks. But that's the point where the, the, the funding would be easy to secure. And we can say, bam, we're hitting the trigger on the campus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so product to market is proof of concept that incentivizes funding and infrastructure that will enable mm -hmm. you to ship. So like the sequence is proof concept, Get funding, then invest. I think so. I think so. Um, and then that still leaves the question, prove model, where we need bodies to show up for that. But yeah. that, I think, that we, you know, right now as we go to finishing, yeah, we get more and more data on that to say exactly what we can afford and actually execute that without losing money, hopefully. Hmm. Right. Yeah, actually, actually cash flowing that learning. Um, okay. So we're not going further down. Yeah. Cool. Well, this was fast so and sounds... curious, but I think we covered a lot of it. Wow. Yeah. No, that's good. That's good. That's good. I think we're, we got the plan. I mean, the plan we came up with, we're, I think we're on it. Um, for me, it's like, keep me on track, man. Like, so there's this three day, uh, 3D printing thing, which is interesting because it's like I always get diverted into these things. But I mean, the, the spinoff saw that like maybe we actually have a high school build crew or a, an OSC club which actually does that after school because the people people involved they love it and you know they're having a good time and seeing you know seeing some of the the promise or magic at least promise because I mean you know until we're we have scaled we're we're just promises to the world <laughs> with proofs of concept, some proofs of concept. I mean, yeah. O um, OSC is sponsoring an OSC club somehow, like with uh, easy DIY projects they can do in class or something like that. Like even that would yeah. be, that would be great marketing too. Yeah. And, and in my, as I, you know, in the mornings with clear thoughts, I think about, man, how do we, how do we nail the, the the other thing we haven't nailed is open source product development time binding or what I call economic time binding, meaning that you can work on this stuff and you do it in such a way like with the wikis and stuff where the next person can actually build upon it and it's building to a very concrete product like that part. Um, that's an unsolved thing, but one thing at a time. Um, <laughs> But why do I bring it up? I say, because what you just said, okay, give them, give the school a curriculum well, or projects. Well, yeah, the trick to that is quality enough, enough energy and focus into that. But that energy can be gotten with very small micro contributions if 
people understood the technique and where it's going. And so far, I haven't been able to communicate that in this work to actually get projects that are just, you know, take off the ground and actually get somewhere. It's um, that barrier is still there in terms of all the skill set and, and the, rather mindset, I'll, I'll say mindset or the mindset necessary to get to that kind of a, a result. Yeah, so it's a cultural shift. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, um, what, one, yeah, thing I want, that's, one, yeah. one thing I want to bring up, you mentioned leadership tracks in the apprenticeship and you said you were thinking yeah. about it. So my, I, I added to the page, my thoughts, bottom line, I think, I think the leadership track is an emergent property of the first successful one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I was kind of struggling and it's like, okay, well, how fast is the leadership going to happen? And no, that all comes out of the program. Like we don't know anything right. until we actually do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Okay. So for next week, logic model and I'll keep working on the uh, construction timeline. Yeah. I'll check in with Steve, like on some quick copy to like, okay, this just really captures it. So basically taking our, um, so Steve helped generate collaborative design for a transparent and inclusive economy of abundance as our vision statement. Um, we need like a little longer one that's still super tight, but right on to like what we do for purposes like this application, that kind of clarity. And I, I think the clarity is emerging all the time. And yeah. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Otherwise, I'm just confused as hell. But you know. No, it, it, it with my minimal <laughs> startup experience, this feels this feels better than average. This feels clearer <laughs> than average. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. Do my best, Katarina. Thanks so much. Yep. Bye. -bye.